This video is part two of a series on the history of cryptography. If you haven't seen part one, click here. We left off in 16th century Europe. Mary, Queen of Scots, had been caught conspiring with a group of English Catholics planning to overthrow the government. She was discovered and executed due to English cryptanalysts breaking her encrypted messages. At this point in history, all ciphers could be broken by a smart enough code breaker with the use of frequency analysis. None of the bells and whistles cryptographers put into their encryptions fooled the cryptanalysts. The cryptographers desperately needed a better system. And in comes Blaise de Visionnaire. As a French diplomat, he had both a personal and a professional interest in cryptography. He realized that the weakness of the current ciphers was due to their monoalphabetic nature. They only used one cipher alphabet. Now, Visionnaire wasn't the first person to realize this. He was influenced by a number of thinkers from the past, like Baptiste Alberti, the famed painter and architect, as well as others who had all realized you could use two or more cipher alphabets instead of one and then switch between them. But Visionnaire took it to a new level. He knew that the more alphabets used, the more secure the encryption. So he didn't use one or two, he used 26. If you remember, there are 26 variations of the Caesar cipher, and Visionnaire used all of them. He did this by creating the Visionnaire Square. The Visionnaire Square is a table made up of all 26 Caesar alphabets. Each line is made by shifting the previous alphabet one to the left. Using this square, the letters in a given cipher would be encrypted using different alphabets. So each letter in the plain text could be represented by multiple letters. And every letter in the cipher text could also represent multiple letters, making it completely immune to frequency analysis. So here's how you do it. First, pick a keyword. Let's go with white. We write down our message that needs encrypting, and we write the keyword over it, repeating it as many times as needed. We then encrypt the plain text letters based on the letter of the keyword. For instance, this M is encrypted using W, so we go to the row on the square that begins with W, follow it down to M, and there you go. This O turns to V, and so on down the line. You can see the strength in the cipher when you look here. The double O's in troops are encrypted to two different letters, meaning a cryptanalyst would have no idea that there were two repeating letters at all. Visionnaire published his new technique in a treatise on secret writing. But surprisingly, or perhaps in some ways unsurprisingly, this cipher was not widely used in the community. Cryptographers in Europe liked the simplicity of monoalphabetic ciphers, and were wary of the complexity of Visionnaire's polyalphabetic one. Okay, Visionnaire's cipher went unappreciated for almost two centuries after he published it, but the cryptographers still needed something better than their current approach. So, there were a few alternatives. The first were homophonic substitution ciphers. A sort of compromise between the simple but weak monoalphabetic ciphers and the strong but complex polyalphabetic ones. A homophonic cipher used multiple symbols for commonly seen letters. For instance, the letter A comprises about 8% of the letters used in English. So a homophonic cipher would have 8 different symbols for A. This type of cipher, because it has more symbols for frequent letters, is resistant to frequency analysis. Every symbol will come up around 1% of the time. Homophonic ciphers were certainly more secure than monoalphabetic ones, but they were still vulnerable to basic code-breaking techniques, because while each letter could be encrypted multiple ways, each symbol in the cipher would only ever correspond to a single letter. 
Another example of strong encryption before the widespread use of the Visionaire cipher was the Great Cipher, used by King Louis XIV, one of the most important French kings in history. The cipher is so complex that I won't be diving deep into it here, but its biggest contribution was the use of symbols to not only represent single letters, but also whole syllables. The Great Cipher was so strong that it wasn't broken until 1893, 200 years after its invention. Now back to the Visionaire Cipher. As I said, it took quite a while for the cryptographic community to recognize Visionaire's genius, but by the 19th century it had caught on and was being widely used. As was expected, the new encryption was almost impossible to solve. No one knew a reliable way to break it, until an Englishman named Charles Babbage. Charles Babbage was an English eccentric and polymath. He was the type of man somewhat common in his day, a man who had enough money to live a life of leisure, bouncing around from one pet project to the next. He is most known for his contribution to computer science, having invented one of the earliest computers, a machine he called the Difference Engine. His contributions to cryptanalysis, specifically the solving of the Visionaire cipher, did not use this machine, however. Just pen, paper, and wit. Babbage knew that the chink in the Visionaire cipher's armor was the use of a keyword. If you could figure out the keyword, then you could break the encryption. What he eventually realized was that the nature of how the keyword was used, specifically the fact that it was repeated, was the answer to solving the cipher. He could use this knowledge to first figure out the length of the keyword. How? Well, Babbage looked for repeated sequences of letters in a cipher. You see, a repeated sequence of letters would indicate that it was the same word, or fraction of a word, encrypted the same way multiple times. Next, Babbage would count the characters between the repeated sequences. Then, he would note the numbers down and figure out the common factor between them. In this example, the common factor is 5, meaning the length of the keyword is 5 letters. Alright, let's open up a dictionary and search all the 5 letter words. Ah, uh, well, I've just been informed that there are around 10,000 5 letter words in English. And besides, a keyword can be in any language, or it could be completely made up so knowing the length of the keyword isn't enough, but it's a start. So we know that the keyword is five letters long. What does that tell us? It tells us that the encryption is using five of these cipher alphabets, and each of these alphabets is just a basic monoalphabetic cipher. We already know how to solve those ciphers, frequency analysis. Charles Babbage's breakthrough was realizing that any polyalphabetic cipher was simply a series of monoalphabetic ones. So with the knowledge that five ciphers are being used, we can look at the first letter, the sixth letter, the eleventh letter, and so on as an encryption of its own, and using frequency analysis figure out the first cipher alphabet, and by extension the first letter of the keyword. Once we do that with all five letters, we'll know the keyword and we'll be able to easily decipher the message. Unfortunately, Babbage never published his findings and was not given credit for his discovery. Only in the 20th century, when scholars were going through his notes, did they realize he was the first to figure out how to break the Visionaire cipher. The technique was discovered independently and then published about a decade later by a Prussian army officer named Friedrich Wilhelm Kassiski, and so the technique was dubbed the Kassiski Method. And that's the end of the video, as well as this series. This series only covered the first stage of cryptography, the second stage of mechanical cryptography, and the third stage of digital cryptography won't be covered on this channel, at least not in the foreseeable future. If you want to know more about it, I'd highly recommend The Code Book by Simon Singh, which was the main source for these videos. Speaking of, if you liked the video, please like it and share it with a friend. Also, please subscribe. Bye!